Hello and welcome. Thank you for tuning in to this month's community venue learning series. For those who are new here, these are our free monthly webinars, which hope to assist, inspire, and equip all those who work in community venues to do their work more effectively, efficiently, or just to learn new skills and get new ideas for your work. Or if you're someone who is scrolling through and found this month's topic intriguing, but don't work in a community venue, then you are also welcome here. For those who are watching this recording after this live event, hello and welcome as well. My name is Carmela and I organize these monthly learning series as well as do marketing and head the social media for space to go So just a little bit about space to go before we um, move on. Our mission in space to go is to help community venues be a thriving hub in their communities by being, by being able to help and provide opportunities to grow bookings, increase community engagement, as well as support. This is why we started this learning series, among other things. We also create and provide free resources to be able to do exactly that. Spaceco is a two-sided marketplace. So it's a place where you can list your spaces where guests can find them online and book your spaces, but it's also an efficient booking system tool where we can reduce our admin by 80%. We work with a number of local governments as well as community centers across Australia and New Zealand. So for this month's community venue learning series, we will be delving into the topic of how to make people feel at home and welcome in your venues. We had two amazing speakers who will be sharing their experiences and take on this topic. We will learn different perspectives on how to approach this topic in hopes that you too can feel inspired to elevate your spaces or for our form of welcoming for your wider local community so they feel at home and a sense of belonging in your venues. So we will just show you the agenda for today. So today's session will be no longer than an hour. I've already done the welcome and introduction. We will just head into a quick icebreaker we will do through the chat. And then we have our first speaker, Nina, who will be sharing her experiences. And then Shana will be speaking after her. And should you guys have any questions and answers after their sessions, we can have that after they speak. And then after that, we will just wrap up. Um, so for our icebreaker for today, we would love to know your name, where you're based, your community venue, and maybe what are some experiences you've had in a space that made you feel at home or welcome. Or um, you can also just tell us what you're hoping to get out of this session today. So if you can't find where the chat button is, if you look at the very bottom right corner of your screen, there's a chat button, uh, which is now um, being used. We have Nina um, saying hi. And so we're just gonna click that. Also, I know it says El Bell. That is, I am not El Bell. That's my boss's name, but I have to use her um, her login for work. Um, but yes, um, if you guys can chuck that in, in the chat, that would be amazing to introduce yourselves. Um, yeah, so we're excited to welcome everybody here. So in the chat, we have Shana from Spaceco. She's based in Christchurch. Um, she's had a year looking after a hall in the University of Auckland for students. Welcome, Shana. Um, we have other people writing in the chat right now, which is awesome. Um, and we've had, in the past, we've had multiple people from Australia join us as well. Um, we have Nina Oberg from Christchurch. She runs the Faleeke Pacific Hub um, with the Pacific People's Place of Belonging to Strengthening Identity. That is awesome. Thank you, Nina. Um, but all throughout the session, guys, you are more than welcome to just chuck in um, your answer to that icebreaker or introduce yourselves. Um, but we will move on with this session. So um, our first speaker hails from Christchurch, New Zealand. We welcome Nina Oberg Humphreys. Nina is a proud Pacific artist. She is also the director and co-founder of the Tangata Moano Trust, whose mission is to drive STEM pathways through Pacific arts, language, culture, and is the cultural lead for the creation of a Pacifica Minecraft world. Through the Tangata Moana Trust, they launched and opened the Faleeke Pacific Hub in Christchurch, which is the first Pacific Hub in Christchurch and the community venue she will be sharing about today. So we welcome Nina to the floor. 
Kira na tatou katoa toa, uh, kone na toko ingoa, nō rāra tonga mai o. Um, it is my pleasure to be here today and share our experiences here at um, Whale Eke Pacific Hub. So um, as Carmel had said earlier, um, I run Tangata Moana Trust. We do STEM education um, for through Pacific Arts, Language and Culture for Pacific peoples living in the South Island. Um, and we also run a Pacific Hub, the first one in Ōtutahi um, Christchurch. We opened Whaleeke last year, um, July, and since then we have had over 8,000 Pacific visitors uh, using all parts of our venue. So here we have a money var, which is a, a a mobile makerspace that has a room full of um, technology, creative equipment, all sorts of things with uh, no barriers to it. You ju we just have to be open <laughs> and you can use anything. We have um, a Pacific Art Gallery, Fibre, uh, that showcases um, artwork from Pacific artists and creatives and communities from all over Aotearoa. Um, and we also have a community space and classrooms that are used by our community members. Something that's unique to us is that um, uh, we're very driven by equity and what that looks like. And um, that really prompted us in wanting to create this space. Uh, we heard from our community multiple times over many generations that we wanted to have uh, a space that represented us, that we felt welcome, um, and that we could hold run events and celebrate our culture, our language, and our identity, no matter what um, what stage you are in um, for that. Um, and so we opened Whaleeke on the premise of this from directly um, and consulting with our community here. And I would say that it has been a raging success. We... Um, offer spaces to directly to community on a koha basis, meaning um, we don't have set fees for anybody that's in our community um, wanting to do anything. We have all sorts of groups here from um, church Bible study groups to um, dance practices, family meetings, um, consultations, all sorts of things. But if you're a community member, there is really effectively no charge. We just ask for something that is reciprocal. And for some that might be bringing toilet paper, for some that might be making sure that we have coffee, um, it is minimal. And even if you don't bring anything, the re reciprocity might be your energy or something later on. Um, and we've done that because we didn't want to have financial barriers to be able to, um, I guess, in gauge or be able to grow or do anything that it is that you uh, want to do to be able to provide more um, education for people or just get together with your community. Our, our local organisations and community groups were going to McDonald's boardrooms and uh, we wanted to stop that and give them a place for um, them to be. For organisations um, or any paid events or funded events, we have a different um, fee structure, which is still um, incredibly cheap of um, $35 an hour for a classroom and then um, $60 for our community space. And we have a capacity of about 80 people. So there's presentation equipment, tables, chairs, all those things that you need to be able to run stuff. And it's run on a very high trust basis. So we are all remote here. We have um, codes and access codes and all sorts of things. And once you engage with us to have a space, then we provide you with these and we um, expect you to, our community, to respect it as their own whale. So whale meaning home, house. And um, it's been, we haven't had any problems. So <laughs> unless something happens, we'll always operate like that. In terms of engagement and getting people through the doors, it has really been um, a mixture of us doing our own programming, but then our community doing theirs as well. Um, and that it's been accessed either through our website or 
via our staff. So we have uh, all Pacific staff, um, five of them, and we're all in the community. And so we often get the last minute, hey, I need a venue tonight. And, and, and we just make that happen. And because we have this remote um, access, um, it makes it easier for us to be able to do that. And our terms and conditions are very simple. We just ask you to respect what is here and, um, and all of our health and safety requirements, which are, are simplified as well. We have a, a, a kitchen that's always stocked full of biscuits, popcorn, fruit, milk, hot chocolate, all those things, and they're just there for anybody to use and also for any um, groups holding events. So that also um, helps financially for people to be able to hold events and do manaki to be able to host people. Um, but also it means that we have a really uh, a nice warm space where people are always welcome and can hang out for hours at a time. One of the things here is that because we are an open hub, so we have our doors open um, to our community from um, 10 to 5 every day, is that people hold events here, but essentially if anyone walks through the door, they also become part of your event. <laughs> and, that's, and, that's, and that's just how it is. <laughs> And we, we've had that happen many times. Um, but um, I think that's the magic and the beauty of this place. It's a real gathering point for people. Um, and it's reflected, our culture, Pacific people's culture, language, identity is reflected in our environment. So we have a lot of artwork. Um, we have um, a lot of photos of our community that are here in um, Christchurch as well. And probably... Um, the most special thing is that we acknowledge our past um, leaders that have helped advocate for our community by having their photos and um, lays or um, ulla necklaces around their portraits as a way of adorning them, but also um, a place of remembrance for us. So that's something that we add on to when um, pillars in our community um, leave to to their next the next journey, and um, that's something that's really grounding for our community that visit because they see people that may have um, affected their lives or advocated for something in which they're involved with, and that's why this space is so important. Um, Give a bit of context. I mean, Christchurch has 22, they say, 22,000 Pacific people. Um, we don't, as Pacific people, partake in um, a lot of, you know, statistical things, um, you know, data gathering. And so we know that there's more out there, but to have 8,000 um, Pacific bodies through the building um, has been huge. We're not exclusive, meaning we do give um, spaces out to other ethnic groups or people that need um, access to spaces. Our big thing is, is that as long as it aligns to um, well, it aligns to our co-papa and um, and supports equity in general, then we um, will support those as well. So it's been um, hugely rewarding. We've got, even this morning, we got a text through saying, hey, we need a space. And so tonight there'll be a youth group here of like 40 kids. So, so, so it's, it's, um, it's definitely open. And I think that that's the reason why it has worked because it has been um, directed by our community in cons consultation but then also upkept through those community relationships. And then from that, people have uh, seen the value in having a space and then welcomed others. We have a rule that as soon as you enter our doors, you become part of our family, you become part of our ainga, which means we all do the dishes. And, um, <laughs> and everyone does, because we don't have a dishwasher here. <laughs> and... Uh, and, and and everyone does. Everyone partakes in everything that we need to be able to make sure that the place is maintained um, and um, looked after and ready for the next group or next visitors that we have. Um, so that's me. Before I say too many ums, 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 but um, 
thank you very much for um, having us here. And if you have any questions, I'd love to uh, um, help answer them, uh, particularly with engaging with our Pacific communities and what you can do to be able to make sure that they have more access to spaces um, in a collaborative and supportive way. Yeah. yeah no, that's, that's awesome. Like, thank you so much. Like, I even got so much from that. Like, the key thing that I took from it was just the fact that your sense of exchange was through reciprocity. And for me, that's like a new perspective or way to allow others to make something welcoming, like your space. So sometimes it's about making something available or accessible to the community, especially those who may, who may not be able to um, make it like financially. So it's an awesome sense of ownership and the fact that you take on the different cultures in your local community. Um, one of the questions like that came up in my mind was, how are you able to run the venue being a not-for-profit space? Like, um, are you the one who um, runs it hands-on? Like, do you have to somewhat hire um, other people to um, run the space or, or even promoting it? Like, how are you for, because we also work with a lot of not-for-profit organizations, like how are you able to like maintain and upkeep the space um, within a budget or no budget? Uh, yeah. Um. I mean, so I didn't mention this earlier, but we do have other organisations that rent office spaces from us. That helps um, to be able to offset the costs. We've found as well that the more community that we get in here through uh, uh, our Koha programme, that more we have organisations that are wanting to come and engage with the space and pay for it to be able to engage with those communities. So they've really offset each other. Um, we do um, STEAM education in schools and in community, and so we have um, the five staff that we share responsibilities over, um, and we we have a cleaner and things like that. But the the biggest um, probably the biggest thing is that we put it back onto the community to help us look after the space, and they have done that, um, be it through. Um, an electrician when we need something done where they've had the benefit of being in the space then then we've been able to connect back with them and they've donated their time or their resource mm -hmm. and um, or any other kind of maintenance thing we are uh, obviously in a charitable trust and so we seek our funds through grants um, a few services that we provide and um, other donations. And we just look at the hub as being a real strength of our, our, our programming. So it's there's lots of different things that go into it. We have a bookings coordinator as well that pops in and, and makes sure that everyone has the relevant information. Um, but as I said, we've been operating for uh, it's nearly our birthday on the on the fourteenth of July, and a lot of it has been uh, working through what it looks like to have a space, uh, the responsibilities in that, and um, moving as we go so that it's re re uh, responsible, but also. Um, financially viable because <laughs> that that's a, that's a that's a big thing is that if we don't have the money to be able to provide it then we can't keep it open yeah. and um our community has supported us with that yeah absolutely my other question was um because i think it's awesome that you put like Matt, the cultural aspect of putting up images of the history of the space of the people the pillars of the community even if they've moved on um, was that quite intentional? Did you find that like the people who come to visit your space, whether they've rented it out or for a community use, um, do you find that it sparks a conversation about the history of your space and your people? Um, yes, one of the coolest things we have in one of our classrooms is that we have a montage wallpaper that has um, about 70 years worth of Pacific images from our community. And that is the most special space next to our portraits is that everyone can find somebody, no matter where they come from in the country, they can find somebody that they're related to or that they know or an event they were part of. So that's been, uh, that's, that's the most special part physically in the building. 
And that's been um, huge in trying to get people to engage, but also to feel warm because we want people to feel like they could sit, stay here, lie on the floor, go to sleep, you know, and then and go home. We're, we're, we're like that. And um, whenever we have programs and things where people do pop in, we still act like that. It doesn't change. And we put that expectation back onto uh people that come in and bring groups is that this is open and um, therefore everyone here needs to remain open so that it's a continual safe space. That's amazing. We have um, a couple more questions um, from Shauna. How do you balance welcoming your Pacifica community and also welcoming others of different communities? Are you an open hub for them too or do you see other people of ethnic backgrounds come through your doors? Yes, yeah, we do. We have a number of other groups that have come through and used the space. Um, we, we've, we've predominantly seen Pacific groups and, and that's who um, has been engaging the most, but we're welcome to everybody to come to come engage and to um, see the spaces theirs as well. Uh, but we lead through a Pacific Copa, yeah. meaning we the way in which we engage is our cultural understanding and our cultural values. And that groups that come into this space, is the, there's an expectation that they take on that as well, because this is um, first and foremost, it is a hub that's for a particular ethnic group. And um, we want that to be upheld and valued and respected in all the work that we do across any of our programs. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, another question was, what was the process of setting up your space in terms of interior decor and hospitality? You mentioned art and having a stocked kitchen. What was that something you consulted with the community about? Um, having definitely having representation, so physical things, artwork, photographs, um, things that are from our own homes or from our island homes. Um, represented and uh, in the space was something that was put forward by our community because it's often something that gets put forward in trying to engage with Pacific communities in any space. We need to physically be able to see ourselves. So that might be a tapa, it might be a photograph, it might be a community leader, but it's important that something is represented. So we just flooded it. Um, and we, we do have a Pacific Art Gallery here. We have a lot of... Um, Anybody that has exhibited has been really kind in donating work to our space. And so as we've gone on in, in the in the year, we've gathered more things. We've got images of our events and things or community groups that have been here up as well so that we just continue to build that sense of community. Um, when it comes to food, um, beverages, all those things, that's just like that was an unspoken has to happen, that's just how it is. <laughs> so, so that wasn't something we consulted about, that was just something that we knew we had to have. Um, and that was because we want people to be able to stay. We want people to be able to feel like they can be here um, and not have to run off or or wherever, wherever and to be able to engage with other things that might be happening here as well, including the the maker space where we have somebody that supports people through um, learning about different types of technology and creative ways and using it. Awesome. No, that's amazing. Thank you so much, Nina. It's so like enlightening to hear so much about how you really cater to the Pacific community in Christchurch. Um, and it makes me like so excited because um, I'm also from Christchurch. So, you know, the greater the space as well for our local communities, like the better it enriches like the people and the cultures as well. And so congratulations as well for almost hitting your birthday. Um, thank you so much for being able to share that with us um, in the process of um, how you guys initiated that and the purpose and the need that you have for the community. And I'm sure like, the people who come through your space already give you great feedback anyway of how welcoming and at home they feel in your mm -hmm. space. So thank you so much. Um, we will now move on to our second speaker. Um, but should you guys ever have any other questions for any of our speakers while they are asking, feel free to put it in the chat. And we can always ask it at the end of their session. 
So our next speaker is Shauna Graham. Um, she is no stranger um, to you guys who have watched these community venue learning series in the past. She currently works in the marketing team here in Spaceco. She specializes in copywriting and email marketing. She is a creative and a musician under the name Valer and is the co-founder of More Than Just, which is a creative business with her husband. But for today's session, she will be tapping into her previous experiences where she was working as a chaplain at the Auckland Catholic Tertiary Chaplaincy, among other things. So we welcome Shana. Hi, everybody. Um, so I'm just sharing my, uh, what do you call it, my PDF presentation. Um, it's still processing, but I will, uh, yeah, thanks so much, Carms. Um, I'm Shana, and I am, yeah, part of the marketing dream team here at space to co um, and you might be wondering why am I here talking about this uh, topic? But um, yes, as as Carmela said, uh, I have had a lot of experience in the past uh, before this role of uh, looking after uh, youth and young adult communities, and specifically in a place called um, Newman Hall for a year, and um, at the University of Auckland as part of the Catholic chaplaincy there. So it was a really special role because. For that year, we had a very similar thing as Nina, a, a hub, an open hub for students. And it's quite cool, actually, to hear from you, Nina, about what you do for um, for your community. There's a lot of overlap um, with what I'm about to share as well. Hopefully, this uh, PDF presentation is... Oh, here we go. Sweet as. Um, let me just have a look. Let's see if it works. Sweet. Cool. So... Um, I am a connector and creative. This is a picture of me, my husband, and my daughter, Lily. Um, just had to chuck that in there so you can know who I am. Um, and yeah, part of my role was before Space Deco was yeah, the youth and young adult work. Events management as well was part of that, um, that role. And also just in terms of music and stuff, uh, there's a lot of overlap in terms of making people feel welcome um, in a space when they come into an event. And I just love spaces and places in general. Placemaking is like a massive passion of mine and I feel like I got really lucky getting into this job because it's literally just supporting community venues to do what they do. And it's just amazing. Um, so yeah, um, I'm going to show you this photo over here. This is, um, I'm not a professional per se, just letting you know in terms of this kind of, you know, I'm not an interior decorator or whatever. Uh, this was the first thing that I did as a, a chaplain at Newman Hall. Newman Hall at the time was a very rundown place. And um, I started in about 2018. It was like the week before students came in and we had a whiteboard in the space. And like my initial thought was like, should I just write a welcome sign or something like that for people to come in and see that, oh, sweet, like New Year's here, that kind of thing. And so um, I think this is just a photo to show you that you don't need to be a professional or you don't need to have everything like uh, to start this sort of journey and making people feel welcome. It could just be writing a sign on a whiteboard. Um, and the whiteboard will uh, feature a lot more in this uh, presentation So um, as we go on. But the topics we'll cover for this session is um, what does home mean? Um, so if you want to make people feel at home, we probably need to define what that means to you and to your community. Uh, considerations for people, considerations for place, and just tips and tricks that I kind of personal tips and tricks along the way that I've um, taken on board. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions, just check them in the chat um, or email me. I'll check in my email in the chat as well later on. Like I said, I don't know much, but just, you know. So the first thing is what does home mean? Um, and you need to think about that as you, as an individual. So you've had a really rough day at work or something, a big, big day. What do you wanna come home to? Like, what does that mean? to you? Do you want to see a clean space? Do you want a warm space? Do you want to be able to just kick your feet up and relax? Is it a place that you want to connect with your family or your flatmates in? Do you want it to be a safe space? You want you don't want to come in here and at your home and feel like you've got, you know, like people attacking you or whatever. Um, what does home mean to you? And I think we need to think about that with our own community venues. If we want people to feel at home, those are the considerations that you need to think about. And then you kind of have to project that onto your community. So think about who's coming into your, your venue. So with Nina, she was saying the Pacifica community are coming through. I love um, how you were saying that 
you need physical things to represent you and you need to see yourself to feel like you can be yourself in a place um so that's you know like do you have other people coming in like maybe mothers mothers are coming into your community venue to use um your space for play groups and stuff so does that mean having a little play space area in the reception or something like that um do you have people that are looking for jobs or needing to, wanting to be educated so you have to kind of think about your people and what does home look like to them um for us at the chaplaincy, um, our community were students. And so three things kind of came to mind. Um, one of them was that they had a lot of pressure from studies, that kind of thing. Uh, they probably were uh, not, uh, they probably broke. Uh, I definitely felt that student life. Um, and also, uh, like, making friends was probably hard because, in especially the University of Auckland, it's a very spread out place and so making friends was a little bit hard so for us home for them meant or for them home meant being able to kick back and feel comfortable and relax um it was a place to actually get some free food so we also stocked our kitchen um with tea and coffee um and then also had like fridge space for them to put their lunch in and that kind of thing and also just like a place to connect with other students as well. So we had spaces of like this kind of lounge area for people to hang out. So think about that. What does home mean? The next topic is um, considerations for people. And we start with people because making people feel at home doesn't start with home. It starts with people. It's those are the, that's the thing you want to feel welcome. You know what I mean? So um, I've got three kind of tips in that way. Uh, Number one is to get to know your people. That's the way that you actually find the needs of your people, your community, but also actually getting to know your people is an act of welcome in itself. So getting to know them as individuals. Um, so welcome is an attitude, it's not an aesthetic. Um, so building relationships actually makes people feel welcome. And if you if you don't, if you don't uh, remember anything else, like that's just the one thing I reckon I would just give you is that you're wanting people to feel like they belong. And part of that is actually getting to know them. So at the chaplaincy, I had this kind of little project. Um, it, it was supposed to be like a, a yearbook, but these are photos that I took of the students that came in. Um, and I said, hey, can I just take a photo of you like near the, the kitchen bench? Um, and they were awesome that like, uh, I knew each of these students and they didn't say yes to this, to me taking a photo because, you know, they wanted a photo. They, they said yes, because I actually got to know them. Um, and so I collated all these photos and it was supposed to be a yearbook, but it didn't happen. If you look here, there's like a little pillar. So I ended up just kind of like chucking the photos up on like a little, um, little string thing. <laughs> um, so it's kind of like a whole, like a uh, wall of fame. Um, if you've seen like restaurants and stuff, they have like famous people that have come through. It was kind of like that. And I thought that was quite cool so that people can come in and see their, themselves. Um, it was a little bit uh, bare at the time, but hopefully it kind of built up as it went on. The second thing is set up a culture. And I, I like what Nina said about uh, once you come into the doors, you've got to do dishes. Um, I think house rules are really important for a venue. Um, it makes you have an identity and say, hey, at this space, this is what we do. And um, part of that as well is if you want home to be a safe space, you got to set those rules, like no abuse, no kind of this type of talk, that that thing, no, no violence, nothing like that. So making sure that those boundaries are set in place. But also they go beyond rules. Um, for example, at our, at um, the chaplaincy, we made it a point to say hello to every single person that came into the door. So regardless of if we knew any, uh, if we knew them as regulars or if they were new, because it was an open hub as well, it was open from I think 10 to five to, um, and anyone could come in through the door. We would say hello and ask their name and that kind of thing. Um, it came to the point where we were actually in a meeting, all the staff was in a meeting and someone came in and the students themselves said hello to the people who came in. So it's like you have to model that yourself and you you might realize that the people who will come in 
will know, oh yeah, this is just what we do with the space. Um, this other photo here too, we also, also like to send people off. And so this was a little, again, the whiteboard has, has come up. Um, this was a little uh, goodbye message to a, an exchange student that we had at, um, who was going back to Chicago. And so all the, all the students, we, we threw a party for them and that kind of thing. So it's just like, this is just what we do here. Um, we acknowledge people when they come in and we also acknowledge them when they, in, in terms of sending them off. Then uh, the third thing is involve your community. So involvement, um, the, the highest form of involvement is actually giving your community decision-making responsibilities. Um, and so delegating a few things. So I know some spaces who have asked people to um, ask their, their community to, you know, paint a mural or something, or like Nina's, um, Nina's venue, they're actually exhibiting art from the people that come in. Um, that means that reciprocity, um, I think that's a really important thing for people to be able to, like, contribute to the space makes them feel like they're part of it because they actually like yeah they were part of creating it as as it is so um as an example we we ran an event this was the old newman hall very run down as you can see but we we ran an event um, and this guy on the left his name is charles he was a french exchange student and i said hey charles um again the whiteboard i was like i want to write a whiteboard kind of like welcome could be as simple as that. I was like, "Hey Charles, what's um what's French for welcome?" And so he he wrote out our um our little like whiteboard. Uh, Bienvenue au Café Catholique. I don't know how to say, it, but like he actually like it was just his his little project. And I also got some students to run the um the cafe bar at the, at the back. You know what I mean? So like for them to actually get involved in the event makes them feel like they're actually you know like part of it. Um, and welcome. And then again with the whiteboard, um, a thing that I did uh, every week was write a question on the board, just some stupid questions. And so anybody who could come in would be able to write up <laughs> an answer. Um, this one was, what is your definition of love? Um, and just for students to have fun, but I think something tactile like that to help um, people kind of get involved. Um, I've seen spaces that have like post-it notes or like chalkboard of that kind of thing. Um, now we move on to place. So doing up your space doesn't have to be um, hard, doesn't have to be challenging. It also doesn't have to be expensive. So I would say, look at your assets. What do you already have um, that you can use? So for example, we were running an event here at this space and we didn't actually do much with it because it was really beautiful already. Like you see this like brick backdrop. Um, that was an asset of the, of the, the space. So what about you? Like, do you have a wall that you could be make a focal point for your space? Do you have um, something that is quite historic about your space, even if it's run down, you know, like um, another thing is that uh, in my other job in Hamilton doing youth and young adult coordination, we had like heaps of pallets. And so we would use them to make stages or we had heaps of crates. So we use them as like little tables and crates are really great for like plant stands. You can see we love our crates here at home and, and plants. So it's just kind of using what you have and being creative with it. The next thing is to celebrate your identity. Same thing with Nina. Um, they celebrated their Pacifica community by showcasing it all over their space. Um, so do you have, I mean, your community venues are all unique. And so what, what makes your unique, oh, what makes your venue unique? Um, is there any history that you can kind of showcase? I know Ayutanga Peace Place, they have like their story on a, on a, it might be a print or something, a tapestry that they showcase at their space. For us, um, we, we moved spaces actually. So Newman Hall, that was a rundown place. We, we packed it up and there was a little bell at the um, at the reception area. And I asked, <laughs> I asked the staff, is it all right if we take the bell? Um, just so that we could actually just continue that kind of history and um, take it with us to the new space. And so this is uh, the bell that the students have um, are holding. They actually, we used it to, um, this is our like prize for games night. 
we called it the Nobel Peace Prize because it's a bell, and they got to ring it um, if they uh, if they won. So same thing here. This this was the team that won, so they got to ring, and yeah, it was just like right next to the reception area. Um, so we just kind of celebrated that history as well in our in our venue. So how can you do that at yours? And finally, use your senses. So I think making people feel at home, you really, you're using your senses, right? So what do you see? What do you hear? What do you smell? What do you feel? And what do you even taste? So when you walk into your venue, what do you see? What's the first thing you see? Do you see clutter? Do you see messy things? Maybe deal with that first. You know, like taking away the clutter. What do you hear? Do you hear silence? Is that something you want people to hear? Or do you want to get people to hear activity? So maybe not close the doors or I don't know, like, or maybe put on some music. Um, what do you smell? Um, is there anything funky going on? <laughs> like, again, it's cleanliness. Feel, are there like different textures in your, in your space? Is there like a rug? Is there a place for people to sit? Um, and even taste. So hospitality, again, are, is there food um, provided? Is it quite accessible to people? Like, do people know that they can get a cup of tea? Um, for me, like, even my midwife office or whatever, they have a little lounge. And, like, first thing you see is, like, help yourself. Like, a little cute sign that says, help yourself to tea and coffee. And that makes me feel really welcome. And just, like, oh, relaxed. Uh, so at, um, this is just an example. So even making the spread look nice. So people, that's like the first thing they see. Um, also lighting is very, very useful. So if you wanna make things feel cozy, maybe dim lighting um, is really nice. Or if you want something to feel like bright and natural, it's like life-giving in that way. The bottom line is keep it simple and people focused. Um, so this was actually a photo. <laughs> My husband um, had a, big day and so I was like you know what I want him to feel special like when he comes home and literally I just set it up like that's just a table I just chucked on some lights had the vases that I already had at home and just set the table and just like little simple things like that made him feel like man you put in that effort to make me feel welcome and that's just like what this is all about is what effort can you put into your venue that makes people feel like you've invested in them in simple ways so again, these are examples. This is um, the, the left picture is when we were saying goodbye to our friend who was going off to Chicago. So we put red, we were trying to find white balloons, but we had black, <laughs> black balloons. So we just put balloons up to make him feel like, ah, oh, it's a party for him, you know, a send off. And then we had a youth and young adult dinner on the right. And um, we could have just had a potluck or whatever, just chuck all the food on the table. But we just set the table to make it look like hey, we, we care about you guys. Um, just something a little bit elevated. And I think that makes people feel like special. You know what I mean? Um, so these are my tips and tricks. Uh, if you don't know where to start, get inspired. So I'm sure um, I'm a big cafe lover. So I would go to cafes and stuff. But what I like about cafes is actually um, the place itself. So I used like, I'd take pictures. I just take pictures of places that I really enjoyed and I would take note of like, what, why do I feel really nice here? Is it because there are plants everywhere or is there like, um, the service was really good. Um, and I, I just would collate photos. So I'll, I'll show you, I'll go back to the side, but I'll show you like, this is an example of all the photos, well, not all, but some of the photos I took over my time in Auckland of like places that I really enjoyed and why I enjoyed them. Um, so you can see plants are a really big thing for me. And uh, um, yeah, you can start to see patterns as to like what you reckon, like what you think is welcoming and, and beautiful to you. Um, the second thing is think life-giving. So I think for a venue, um, people want to uh, congregate in a place that is full of life. Um, and simple things can actually help with that. So plants, um, I am a big proponent of real plants, real life plants. I'm not a fan of fake plants, no judgment, but I just think real life plants, they're not that hard to look after uh, and they're very effective. It just gives like a sense of nature and just there's life 
like li literal life in in your space. Um, and you can have like a, a, a little thing like this, or you know, ask Carmela if you want to um, know anything about plants. She's like the plant extraordinaire. Most of my plants in my house are from a Carmela. Um, lighting, so natural light is really important at our space in Newman Hall. We had really thick red curtains. And I was like, take them down. Like, <laughs> that's just blocking light. And um, like natural light is just so nice. Like we've got lights on at the moment, uh, even though it's the daytime, but it's just, it helps you feel alive. And activity. I think obviously having people around at your, at your space makes people feel like, oh, cool. There's something happening here. Um, but if that's kind of lacking a little bit, Music is a really good thing. Maybe just checking on some music or having someone at the reception area, like a person to greet and welcome. That's, you know, that's like a, a good thing to make people feel like, ah, oh, there's something going on here. And again, it doesn't have to be expensive. You can get thrifty, find things around your area or marketplace is really good. Op shops are really good. Or even swap from people that you know. Ask around in your community. Um, like I said, you don't have to be an interior decorator. You don't have to have the fanciest thing. Like home is where the heart is, you know. So, um, yeah, you don't want to have this museum kind of uh, thing where everything is so clean that people don't want to even come into your space. So, yeah, if you have a look, this is um, – these are the spaces I like. They had a lot of plants, nice lighting, just simple things, a lot of brown, a lot of natural things. Um, so, yeah, thank you so much for having me. And um, again, if you have any questions, I'll put my email in the chat. And yeah, thanks again, Nina, as well. It was really awesome. Um, yeah, thank you. No, thank you, Shana. That was amazing. I was just like typing up so many notes, even though we will receive the PowerPoint after. It was just quite practical and quite hands-on and easy to understand. I think for me, what stood out was the fact that you can do so much with simplicity and you can do so much with a budget or no budget at all. Um, and similar to what Nina mentioned in the past, which you emphasized even more in your session was allowing the community to contribute so that you're not the only one. Like, I think for some people who work in community spaces, there's this pressure to feel like, oh, why am I the only one thinking about this? Why is there, why is no one else like um, worried about like how our spaces are feeling? Um, but actually like, other people have very significant ideas as well. Um, and then you can see what collaboration can do. And then it's just remembering that you work in a community venue, therefore getting the community involved and getting them to contribute to that communal space um, to feel welcoming and to feel to make others feel at home would be such a great aspect to have. Um, one question that stood out for me was, um, in seeing, because you did mention that with Newman Hall, it did, it did seem very run down. It was quite old, so it was almost like you had to start from scratch. Did you find that after you started doing up this space that the atmosphere of it um, changed and therefore the people as well coming in changed? Like for me, what was the biggest change in terms of the people did you notice once you start ma started making those changes? I think, yes. Like, um when we started actually taking care of our space, um, I think everybody started taking care of the space as well. <laughs> so it's like they weren't, um, I think before, because I, I was a student there too, so I could come in and there wasn't a lot of care, I think, taken like um, students-wise um, because people just didn't care about it. Like it was just like this rundown place. But when we started actually putting effort into making it look nice, people started being like, oh, okay, this is a place that um, we need to look after and keep, keep up. Um, and that came with us as well, us, like, keeping it clean and that kind of thing. <laughs> yes, I think um, – and I think people did feel welcome and more um, – I don't know, like, yeah, you want to come home to a clean house, you know what I mean? Like, that kind of thing. I think that was the biggest thing for us. Yeah. Did you also find, not that it's always about numbers, but did you find that like um, a number of the students, because the space felt a bit more welcoming, that like they were inviting a lot more of their friends um, over and then, and therefore 
you have new people come through your community venue as well. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I think, um, I mean, in some ways it's different. Our our venue was, or like our hall, um, had different people coming in just because it's a university. But I think I definitely found a lot more people coming in and inviting, you know, even their families, like, to come in and hang out and stuff like that. So, yeah, I, I think I saw that too. Yeah. No, thank you so much, Shana. That was an amazing presentation. We definitely learned a lot. And, again, for those watching the recording, we will be sharing um, this PowerPoint. <clears throat> Excuse me. To you guys, so if you felt like you couldn't write down the notes or anything, don't worry about it. Shana was quite generous in being able to share her presentation. Um, so um, we are now at the end of our session. Um, but before that, we just wanted, oh, let me flip through our, we just wanted to let you guys know that we do have a Facebook group for people who work in community venues. This is by people who work in community venues for people in community venues. Um, we will send you the link um, at the end of this recording on uh, how to access it. Um, so you don't need to memorize the how to over here, but um, you simply need to ask, answer the member questions and you can connect with others who work in New Zealand and Australia. Um, and our next community venues le um, learning series will be on next month on the 20th of July. And next month, we are excited to announce that we our topic will be building strategic relationships and that will be on community engagement. Um, again, uh, massive, massive thank you to both our speakers, Shauna and Nina. I know Nina's um, online, but you can't see her camera. But um, the insights that you guys have shared and your experiences have been so valuable. And we're just so excited to see what the community, people in community venues, what they choose to do with the insights that they've learned today. So thank you again, everybody, and have a great day.